you, the custodians of future Earth, are beginning to make their eco footprints visible to the world. They are engaging other youth and creating awareness to spearhead action on climate, biodiversity, and sustainability. Let's see what the youth are doing for their environment in different parts of the world. Hi everyone, this is Anna Kerr from the podcast Gender and Climate. In order to achieve climate justice, we need everyone. We need to establish real gender equality. And for that, we need all hands on deck from every person on this earth. In my podcast, Gender and Climate, I talk about the very nexus and I interview people from all around the world experts, activists, grassroots people, to get the voices heard of the ones suffering, of the ones taking the actions, of the ones asking for taking the actions. And as our real duty, if we want to see a change in this world and to achieve right climate justice, to get the voices heard, to make actions and to achieve real gender equality. So if you're interested, Please listen to the podcast. Please get the voices heard because it is our very duty. As young people and women, it's really important to remind negotiators, states, and all the stakeholders that what is being negotiated here in Montreal in the COP15 is the survival of life on planet. So as young people, we are mobilizing a lot of our power to implement this at the local level. An example of this is Barranquilla Plus 20, a youth led organization working in Colombia and in coordination with many Latin American countries on how young people are key players for solutions for biodiversity conservation, water governance, and climate action. So it's really important that you take into account our work, our contribution, because they are doing the most difficult job, that is implement what is being decided at global level at the local ground. The impacts that a country has aren't limited to within its borders. To understand our impacts, we need to understand the impacts of trade. And to help with this, I've been working on an indicator of the global environmental impacts of consumption. Uh, this can be found at commodityfootprints.earth. It has estimates of the biodiversity loss, deforestation, water use, and greenhouse gas emissions associated with deforestation. Um, linked to each country's consumption. I'm currently a youth working at the Joint Nature Conservation Committee on solving the biodiversity climate nexus. Hi, my name is Esteban Marin. I'm from the Global Youth Biodiversity Network, Chapter Colombia. As a lawyer in Colombia, I've been involved in the declaration of climate emergency in the Atlantico. You know, uh, we have a lot of limitants towards uh, access to information, to particip participation as a youth, to defend biodiversity and to conservate a wetland in the north of Colombia called uh, La Cienaga de Mallorquín. In so this in these situations, I've been um, uh, involved and been like an addressing a lot uh, about how uh, youth can be more involved, have guarantees of participation in, in, in different in scenarios and in, in towards to defend and protect uh, biodiversity. As a student at my university, I've been advocating for embedding sustainable literacy into curriculum because I believe that every student should come out with an idea of how their discipline is part of the solution to the climate crisis and the biodiversity crisis. Currently, education is decentralized. Every discipline has its own way of thinking, but it doesn't always include sustainability. And I believe that the best way to implement sustainability into the curriculum is to embed it into stuff we're already doing, embed it into case studies we're doing, embed it into problems we're solving in the classroom so that when students leave the university, they know how they are part of the solution and not the problem. The role of youth from indigenous territories is also often highlighted in global climate and biodiversity conferences. They are increasingly suffering from loss of traditional knowledge, but they are constantly finding transformative solutions. Let's have a look. I'm Bobby Stikata, Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance, Zambia in Chikankata District. Due to climate change, our people uh, or the local people have decided to come up with indigenous solutions to adapt and survive in this climate change. Some of the things that they've started doing, they've started blocking some small streams that were unable to keep water due to insufficient drains. So they're able to harvest water, which they're able to use in the dry season for their animals and the domestic use, and also for their plants and gardens. 
some other people have resorted into stopping the traditional culture of growing maize to now rearing goats and village chicken because it's not all the time that we have full rain season or most of the time we have floods while others have stopped their tradition of growing crops and their potatoes near the streams because the mud would run from the uh, potato field to the stream and making the stream dry in a shorter period of time. Thank you. Es importante reconocer el trabajo de las mujeres, especialmente de las mujeres jóvenes, en sus procesos a nivel de territorio y es especialmente donde hemos realizado diferentes actividades en el tema de educación ambiental. ¿Qué es o de qué se trata? Es liderar iniciativas en la cual permiten monitorear la biodiversidad que hay dentro de las comunidades para generar programas en temas de conservación. As youth find solutions for themselves, young professionals in various institutions are further engaging youth and children to inculcate in them the values of nature at a very young age. My name is Yusuf Olatunye Kinani. I'm the executive director of Earth Advocacy and Empowerment Foundation, an environment platform based in Lagos State, Nigeria. It's a non-governmental organization. We engage in different activities, especially with young people in the areas of climate change advocacy. Second, we engage in training activities for young people, training in the area of renewable energy, so that people get to understand and know how to make use of our renewable um, uh, technologies like um, solar electricity system and other things. Then also, we establish climate change club in secondary schools. For now, we have about 25 schools that we are engaging with. We meet with those schools every Wednesday to discuss with them on the areas of separation of waste, plastic waste, the wood waste, disposable waste, medical waste, so that people understand these things. Hello, everyone. I am Zerin Savashan from Sajik University, Konya, Turkey. And I'm working on environmental law and policies issues for years, and I'm very interested in finding out some different ways, tools of teaching and making teaching interesting for students. So I made a project uh, aiming to strengthen the capacity of the academicians for uh, working on environmental law and policies specifically, but in general, other environmental issues as well. And then after that project, we established the Academy of Environmental Studies with a very small youth community, as you see at the background, and sending you hacks from Turkey. Rising awareness, transformative actions, and all of us together are the solutions for tomorrow. Together, we change our world for the better. Together, we are the solution. Together, we're the solution. Thank you.